Former US President Donald Trump has been charged with attempting to overturn his 2020 election loss in the state of Georgia. He and 18 others have been indicted on counts that include racketeering in a 41 charge document issued by Fulton County Grand Jury. The former president is facing 13 counts, including racketeering, solicitation of violation of oath by a public officer and conspiracy. The list of defendants indicted late on Monday night includes former Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani on the left there and former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, former White House lawyer John Eastman and former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark. Well, the charge sheet refers to the defendants as a criminal organisation. The indictment document says Mr Trump knowingly and willingly joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the election in Georgia and elsewhere. The indictment marks the fourth time Mr Trump has been criminally charged this year. Well, let's take a listen then to what Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis said a short time ago. The indictment alleges that rather than abide, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. Subsequent to the indictment, as is the normal process in Georgia law, the, the grand jury issued arrest warrants for those who are charged. I am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday, the 25th day of August, 2023. Well, the grand jury investigation into Mr. Trump was sparked by that infamous January 2020 phone call between the president and Georgia's secretary of state, Brad Raffensperger. Here's a little of what Mr. Trump said during that call. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. <clears throat> now, aside from the phone call that we were listening to there uh, with Mr. Raffensperger, Mr. Trump is also accused of pressuring lawmakers. Mr. Trump's team told them they had the power to decertify the state's electoral college results. He also allegedly coordinated a scheme to have fake members of the electoral college cast their votes for Mr. Trump in Georgia rather than Joe Biden, who in fact won the state. And Mr. Trump's campaign lawyers also reportedly worked with a data firm to copy sensitive data from election systems in a Georgian county. The most serious charge uh, violating to the Racketeering Influenced and Corruption Organisations Act is punishable by a maximum of 20 years in prison. That act designed to help take down organised criminal syndicates like the Mafia. Well, former President Trump denies all the charges. His campaign issued this statement earlier. It read, uh, they are taking away President Trump's First Amendment, the right to free speech and the right to challenge a rigged and stolen election that the Democrats do all the time. The ones who should be prosecuted are the ones who created the corruption, it read. Well, our North America correspondent, Sean Dilley, a little earlier, gave a bit more information on the charges against the former president. 13 felony charges for Donald Trump, 41 uh, charges overall for him and 18 others. Charged under racketeering uh, laws, very much what you'd ordinarily be used to kind of seeing in uh, mob type setups. Nobody's suggesting entirely that, but these are the laws that uh, Georgia have charged uh, Donald Trump and others with. There appears on the face of it to be quite a bit of overlap in the separate federal case being prosecuted in Washington, D.C., where Donald Trump has already been uh, charged with attempting to cheat the election. But this one's got some uh, slightly different nuances in it. It does focus on a call on the 2nd of January 2021 uh, to Georgia's top lawmaker, uh, where Donald Trump had said he wanted him to find 11,780 votes. He's since, and as recently as today, described that as a perfect telephone call. Clearly, Fonny uh, Willis, the prosecutor in this case, uh, disagrees. But Donald Trump, again, repeating what he said in other prosecutions is that they've had two and a half years to investigate this. And he's questioning the timing given the proximity to the election. 
Uh, and Julie, in terms of the time scale, then, to, uh, talk us through what happens now. What can we expect? How long might this take to play out? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, doing a bit of digging into local Georgia laws. Ordinarily, you'd expect what's known as the arraignment. That's the first uh, appearance, the, uh, the start, if you like, of the criminal trial process. Uh, that would normally happen sort of uh, within a few days ordinarily. Now, the prosecutor in this case has said that she's giving uh, the defendants, 19 defendants, until midday local time on Friday to voluntarily surrender. But in, in Donald Trump's case, certainly, um, he is a Secret Service protectee. Now, that means that the Secret Service uh, and local law enforcement have to uh, discuss that timing. More is going to become clear uh, over the next 12 to 24 hours. In terms of the timing of the trial, the prosecution say that they will ask whether it's possible to bring this to trial within the next six months. But you see, what would be likely to happen, as with the other cases, is that uh, Mr. Trump's attorneys would say, well, hang on a minute, we've got two and a half years worth of investigations. Uh, the grand jury have interviewed 75 witnesses. Uh, the evidence in this case is, is enormous. We need time uh, to look into that. Now, of course, for the prosecution's perspective, getting this out of the way quite quickly would, would have advantages. He's facing trials in other cases. Cases in, in March in New York over allegations that uh, he used his business to hide payments to a porn star. Uh, in May, he's going on trial in Florida over the classified documents retention uh, case on espionage and obstruction charges. No date yet been set for the federal case that's being prosecuted in Washington, D.C. under Special Prosecutor uh, Jack Smith. Uh, but that's the case that has the closest relation to this uh, case in Georgia. One of the points that some people are making, of course, um, and again, I feel they're probably getting slightly ahead of themselves uh, to, to a great point. We don't know what the uh, results will be. Everybody's presumed innocent till proven guilty in a court of law. But, of course, on federal uh, convictions, if hypothetically they happened, it would be within the power of an elected president to pardon themselves, whereas with state cases, they can't do that. Sean Dilley there uh, in Washington for us.